my message today, I'll be giving you the biggest secret God gave me about prayer. The best secret or the greatest secret God taught me about prayer. I can, I can assure you that if I can pray with you, your prayer can be answered. If I can pray with you, your prayer can be answered. That one I can assure you. But I'm not, I am not yet sure if you can pray with somebody, a result can happen. I will tell you why I'm not sure about that. Because already we have so many Christians who have prayed several times, countless times, but they have no answers. And sometimes you reach a level where you begin to, 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 to wonder, does this thing really work? Does God really answer prayer? There is a biggest secret, greatest secret that God taught me about prayer some years ago. And I've moved that secret and I've shared with nobody. And today I feel like sharing it with you. Yeah. Praise be to God. Yeah. I was getting so many testimonies today. Uh, so many people testifying of uh, last week's service when we were breaking the spirit of delay. So many people are coming out to testify, and some of you will be testifying by tomorrow, some of you by next week, but testimonies are coming. Don't just forget we broke the demon of delay. You see, sometimes we, we tend to forget. Are you hearing me? Sometimes we forget that we broke the spirit, so we keep on thinking we have the spirit. And now, when we do that, we bring back that spirit. Hello? Get up your hands for Jesus Christ. So let's go into the book of Matthew 18. Verse 19. The Bible says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Now give me NIV version and I want us to read together loud. One, two, three, go read. Again, I tell you, Ooh, again, again I tell you, you told me before, if I come to you and then I say again, I'm saying this, it means I said it before, right? It means I said it before. Now we'll look at it, where did he say it? When he said again, I tell you this. Now, we're going to find out, where did he say? How many of you would like to say, prophet, I want to know, how can I pray to get answers immediately? Can I say, if you want to know that, can I see your hand up? Then I'm talking to the right people in the overflow, in the miracle ground. How many of you would like to say, they would really want today to understand what goes wrong with their prayer? Praise be to God. Now, the Bible says, Again, I say unto you, hmm, that if two of you shall agree on anything, sorry, on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. The word touching anything has been removed in many versions. So other versions say, if you shall, two, two of you shall ask anything. But in King James Version, the Bible says, as long as, hear this. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, 
touching anything, they shall ask. Hello? Hello? Now, I just want you to see this statement here. The Bible says, as touching anything. That word can be confused with in relation. People may think concerning. Others may think in relation to what they want to ask. But this is more than that. The Bible says, in relation to, in relation to, or in or concerning of this statement, rather the Bible actually says, as touching. So it's not to do with in relation or concerning, but the Bible says, in or as touching anything they shall ask. The word ask there, it, in a Greek word, when you see in a Greek translation, is actually desire. Somebody say desire. desire. Say it again, desire. desire. So, as touching anything they shall desire. Somebody say desire. desire. Now, let's stop there before we even continue. The Bible here says, if two shall ask anything on earth, as touching to anything they shall desire. Wait. The Bible here does not say something which some of you think it says. We have so many Christians who say the Bible says, ask if two of you shall ask anything, it shall be given. If two of you shall ask anything in my name, it shall be given. The Bible does not say so. The Bible says, as long as there is a desire. Hello? The Bible does not say if two of you shall ask anything. In my name, on earth, it says, if two of you shall ask anything on earth, as touching to anything you shall desire. That word desire there is the most important word that we want to look at. Praise be to God. When you see in the Greek word, it actually says ahiteo. Or ahiteo. A-H-I-T-E-O. Ahiteo. Ahiteo. In the Greek word, ask, which is there, is ahiteo, which means to have a craving, burning desire. Say after me. Craving, burning desire. Craving, burning desire. Exactly. So if you are saying, Papa, the Papa says, if we shall ask anything in his name, he shall give it to us. So we are praying. That prayer is powerless. It is as good as singing a song, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. We have to be busy. We are praying. We are fasting. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are, let's pray. Let's pray for this is going to happen. The Bible does not say that. It says if you have a desire. The desire there, in other versions, when we, we got into Old Testament, it was used as to pant. My soul pants for the Lord. It is a burning, quenching desire. The problem of so many people, the Bible does not say just you to have a desire. It actually says, hmm, watch this. The Bible actually says, and again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask or desire, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So the first thing to be done before prayer, there must be a desire. There's a difference between a wish, a thought, and a desire. If you're following, say prophet, I'm following. <laughs> now, what's the difference? I have seen so many people praying, but they don't you know actually what the Bible says. You may be sitting outside there or in here, 
Say, prophet, yes, yes, I, I want my child to be delivered. I want healing. But if it is just a want, there will be no healing. Because Jesus does not say, you just ask him something. He says, if there shall be a desire, I want first of all to plant this to you before, you know, before I take you into another level, before I even pray with you. There must be a desire. That's why the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When a desire has fully developed, then you'll find yourself praying. How many are following? How many are following? How many are following? How many are following? Can I continue? All right. So there's a secret here. What is a secret? Desire. The Bible, you can quote the scriptures. You can see the Bible says, ask and I'll give you. The Bible says, if you shall pray together, I will do a miracle. But the Bible says, if only there is a desire. If there is a quenching, a thirst, a burning desire. I need this to happen. I want this thing to happen. I desire this. Now, verse 20. Of the same chapter of Matthew 18. The Bible says what? One, two, three, go read. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Two or three gather together. How many are we here? How many are we here? But what is really happening? That you pray for something and there's no change. Do you know what? And do you know why? It may happen. The prayer partner, your husband or your boyfriend, or the person you are praying with, they have not developed a desire. If I am praying with you for a miracle to happen, I must have the same desire. You must have the same desire. Now, when we have your desire plus my desire, when we pray, that's what Jesus is talking about. It does not work when you don't have a desire. All in you, what's there is a wish, is a want, because you're under panic. You must pay the debts. You must pay something. Or you are, you are, you are, you are under pressure. Pressure is not a desire. The biggest problem here, most Christians are praying with the pressure, not desire. Tell your neighbor, what's, what, what is moving you to pray? Is it pressure? Pain? Or it is a desire? Now, the Bible didn't say anything more than desire. What is a desire? As I say, it is it's like you are thirsty for something. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you are addicted to smoking, you develop a desire to smoke. Did you hear that? To a level where but when you see somebody smoking, you don't know the person. You may even ask for him to help you with a cigarette. Somebody has smoked already half. You don't know the person. He has put his saliva on that thing. Like, Give me. Don't behave like you have never smoked. More especially. Say it's a desire. So a desire will make you to travel. A desire will make you do some certain things. There is a difference between a desire, a pressure, a want, and a wish. Most Christians, your prayers are centered on pressure, wish, or want. 
Jesus never said, if you shall wish. No, no, no. He said, if you shall ask whatsoever, you shall desire. Now, let's go into Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Mark 11, verse 24. King James Version. 1, 2, 3, go read. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you, wait, whatsoever thing you, no, 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 no. This is why Jesus, he's repeating in the book of Matthew, he says, again, I say unto you, because he said it somewhere else. Now he's repeating the same statement. The Bible says, whatsoever, give me the scripture, it says, whatsoever, I love this, therefore I say unto you, what things soever, anything, whatsoever you want, I love this, whatsoever you desire when you pray. Let's stop there first before we continue. If you don't understand this teaching, trust you me, you end up praying, praying, you'll be like a brass, just, just like a useless sound. The Bible says, whatsoever you desire. Now, in, in the book of Mark, Jesus is telling us where must we desire and when must we desire. Then he says, when we pray, there must be a desire as we are in prayer. Now, go by the verse. The Bible says, whatsoever things, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, comma, then it gives you the time of that desire. What's the term? When you pray. So in your prayer, there must be a desire of what you are looking for. Not a desire to pray, but a desire to what you are in need of. You desire it to, to be there. You are looking for the healing to be there. So you are desiring the healing. Now, let, let me show you something very important here. Let me just show you something very important. What do you, what do, you do if a person comes to you and grabs your phone? You don't know the person, grabs his, your phone and walks away. You'll be like, ah, wow. You'll be like, hello. Ah, wow, this person is so professional. What will you do? Come on, what, what will you do? Huh? Because why? Why? Whose phone is that? Exactly. The moment you have this revelation to know what God says. Because God gave everything you're looking for already to you. Did you hear that? All the things of the air, the things of the land, anything you're looking for, God gave you already. But Adam, our forefather, lost it to the enemy. So we are not looking for it. It is ours already. We are looking for restoration. What we had and lost, we are looking for it. Now imagine, imagine the devil comes to you because when you were born, you were born without sickness. You were born without a problem. You were born just you. As you were growing up, you began to find issues and problems. The man that God brought on earth didn't have an issue. When you were born, you had no any problem. But when you were growing up, you began to meet problems. Do you know why? Because you don't know. It's like somebody comes and grabs healing from you and walks away. And you are doing a wave in your hand like, wow, it's so professional. When you know it is yours. There is a desire to get it back. When you know this is yours, there is a desire to receive it back. Wait a moment, wait a moment, wait a moment. Watch this. Before we go there, watch this. So I'm looking for a house. Or I'm looking for a car. Now, I go into a garage. Mm -hmm. I see the car. And I go home and I tell my partner, I saw a wonderful car. And we must pray for a miracle. Listen to me. There will be no any car coming. Go together. Desire it together. Oh, you, you this side is so slow. Let me try to go this direction. Take your sister with you. Take your prayer partner with you. Go for a house viewing. You look at the house. 
both of you must develop a what? A desire. When there is a desire, Mariko Padia. I receive. I receive. When there is a desire, you see, if, if he is not interested in the car, don't force the issue. Look for the one both of you will be having. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, if you shall desire, you shall have it. The Bible says, if you shall desire. Now, go back to scripture. Now, the Bible says, go, go quick and again. Therefore, I say unto you, one thing soever you desire gives you the time of desiring. When you pray, believe that you receive them. And you shall have. But see the most important statement there. Is what? Desire. So why are you praying without having? Because you are praying without a desire. You are praying with the pressure. You are praying with just a wish or a want. But that's not what the Bible is saying here. This is why Jesus would see a blind man. And he would say to him, what must I do for you? Come on, Jesus, this man is blind. We all know what he's looking for. We want him to see but he would ask you in order for you to develop a desire. So you must say to yourself, what's the difference between which wants and desire? What's the difference? The difference is so simple. If you're operating under a wish, if you're operating under a want, it is not something that is coming from deep down your heart. Let me say this to you. There are two different prayer petitions. A person who is looking for a job, most of the times, they don't get a job they desired. Most of the times, uh, uh, students end up with a career they did not desire. How many are saying it's true, what I'm saying? When you were growing up, some of you, you were pirates. You'd be like, I'll, I'll be a pirate. When you were growing up, some of you were saying, I'll be a teacher. Some of you are saying, uh, I'll be a soldier. Some of you, a lawyer. Some of you, I want to study psychology. But as you are moving with life, Hello? As you are moving with the life, things began to change. What started changing? Your desire. A want. You may want to get married because of things around the marriage. There are reasons why people get married. Some get married because they're growing old. That's not a desire. That's pressure. So even if I pray for you, nothing will happen. Because we are praying on the foundation of pressure. Ah, but Major One delivered me. We didn't deliver you. You are, you are still undelivered. Until you develop what? A desire. To get married. Wait, so what's the difference? Desire has got a meaning in it. You desire something for a, for a purpose. But want or pressure comes because you're under panic. Why do you want to get married? Because everybody's asking me, when are you getting married? That's pressure. That's not desire. Why do you want to get married? Oh, prophet, I want to get married because I have this fantasy. Of this wedding dress. Oh my, I can't wait. 
I want to have this royal wedding. I want, I'm just thinking helicopter, horses. Oh, my goodness. That's not a desire. That's a what? That's a want. It's not a pressure. It's just a want. So you're praying for something. In your mind, you've got a picture, you've got a vision of a wedding day. You are forgetting marriage is not a wedding day. Marriage is when everybody has left the wedding venue. What are you asking for mainly? Are you asking for the day? Are you asking just for the sake of a ring? Are you asking, what are you asking for? All right, we'll give you a wedding. You, you have the wedding. That's what you wanted. I want to get married. Hey, it's not about getting married. After getting married, the question is, so what? That you are married. This was your prayer request. I want to get married. You are married. So what? I want a car. I want a car. Okay, God has given you a car. So what? So the biggest problem is we have got people who are in church today under pressure, under want, under a wish. So because it is just a want, it does not come from your heart. It is just a fantasy. You see yourself in a nice car. You see yourself in a nice house. So anything out of your mind, God has nothing to do with it. He is near to those who are broken in spirit. It must come from your spirit. It must come from your desire. Somebody shout hallelujah. So you see, somebody coming on the prayer line, what do you want? Oh, Major, I want to get married. Why do you want to get married? Eh, Papa, my, my mom is asking me every day. That's pressure. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to get married because of pressure. I don't want to, I don't want to have a miracle because of pressure. But because I desire it. So Jesus says, whatsoever thing you desire, say after me, whatsoever thing I desire. Exactly. So you see, people just say, the Bible says, whatsoever you want. It's not the want which is used there. It's desire. Ahiteo. Which means to develop a burning sensation of desire in order to acquire something. For a certain mission or purpose. Deliver my mother. Huh? Deliver my mother. Just from nowhere. Just deliver my mother. Just like that. Deliver my brother. Huh? You must develop a desire to see your brother delivered. If I may ask you a question now, what should I pray for you? You will tell me financial breakthrough. If I may ask you a question, why do you want financial breakthrough? Your answer will be because I'm in debt. Because I haven't paid this. Because I, oh, prophet, you have no idea. Oh, you have no idea. Me, I have no idea. It's not about an idea. You are under pressure. God does not answer pressure. That's what the Bible says. Keep calm. Be still. And know I am the Lord. Whenever you are panicking, you must shut up your mouth as the Bible says, the man. Stop the pressure. Stop the unnecessary panicking. Oh, you have no idea, prophet. People are fighting me left and right. That's now you are not praying under desire. You are praying under fear. If you don't pray for me, prophet, I'm going to lose my business. This business, I'm going to lose. My... So you're afraid of losing the business. God does not answer fear. The foundation of your prayer is wrong. Before we even pray, can we first deal with your foundation? There must be first a desire. 
You are desiring your business to move forward because that's where your heart is. You feel like, I want to do this. My heart is right in it. It must come from your heart, not because of pressure. Are you hearing me, somebody? Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, watch this. Verse 23 of the same verse. All right, verse 23. Huh. So, for very I say unto you, that whatsoever you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, not in mind, but a heart, desire. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he shall say. It must develop in the heart, said with the mouth. Not said with the mouth and believed with the mouth. It comes from the desire. I want a company prophet. I want my company to move forward. Why do you want it? In your mind, you're seeing yourself as a boss. All you are thinking is, I can imagine myself. I can imagine myself. Hear me. If you're looking for healing today, develop a desire to be healed. I said develop a desire to be what? When Jesus went on the poor Bethsaida, the Bible says, on this, there were five porches. On these five porches, laid a great number of important people, sick, withered, deaf, dumb, were there, we waiting for the troubling of the water. Whosoever goes in there first, he was being healed. But Jesus went there. You can assume Jesus Christ um, um, uh, arriving in a hospital. What would everyone think? Tell me, what would be everyone thinking? That when Jesus goes in the hospital, what's going to happen at that hospital? Come on, answer me. Okay, so our assumption is that every person in that hospital will be what? All oh, right. So Jesus went on this poor bedside, which was like a hospital. There were thousands of people. When he went there, he only healed one person. Jesus can enter the hospital even now and only heal one person. Because the rest of the people on that place, they did not have a desire. You may be on the prayer line and I may pray for everybody and only six people may come with a testimony because they developed So make sure today, before we pray together, it must not be out of pressure. It must not be out of a fantasy. It must not be out of pain that you're passing through because you're having pain at your back or you're having pain in your stomach and you say, prophet, I can't take this pain anymore. Can you heal me? Come on. This is not a hospital. This is a divine place where God, he uses divine principles in order to perform divine activities. Somebody shout hallelujah. So the moment you understand that this is what I must do, operate not under pressure. If you're following, raise up your hand. Say, prophet, I'm following. Clap your hands for Jesus Christ. When God spoke to me about that secret, you see, I was praying for revival. I was praying for revival. It was just a wish. Until one day, when I began to sing that song, He's my desire. To see South Africa coming to Jesus. 
to see Limpopo. Joe has been coming to Jesus. It's my desire to see South Africa coming to Jesus. To see Zimbabwe, Malawi, Tanzania, Botswana coming to Jesus. Hey! It is a desire. It's my desire to see you today receiving your miracle. To see deliverance. To see healing coming to you. Hey, 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 hey. Tell you about develop a desire, not just a wish, not just a want. Sit up a moment. We all know the story of Hannah and Penina. Hannah went in the temple for several times to pray. She was praying in the house of the Lord countless moments and times and days. She was in prayer. Every day she was in prayer. And she didn't have a child. But the day a desire developed. <laughs> First Samuel 1 verse 15. The day a desire developed. She did not pray from her wishes. It was a prayer from her desire. Whatsoever you desire. Only if you and me can agree today. We are desiring this to happen. And when we pray under desire, oh, yes. Jesus says, whatsoever things, whatsoever things, oh, yes. whatsoever things, oh, yes. whatsoever things you do what? Oh. You desire. Whatsoever things you want, you desire. Whatsoever things you want, you desire. Can you desire a house today? Oh, Can yes. you desire marriage? Can oh, you desire yes. financial breakthrough? Can you desire miracles? Oh, Can you yes. desire healing? Say, Major, I desire it now. I desire it. Give me the scripture. The Bible says, What? Oh, and Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. She says, it's not that I'm drunk. I am praying under the influence of desire. It is from my heart, from my soul, from my spirit. I, can imagine. I, I, I really love so much when I see some Pentecostal, you know, Pentecostal prayers. Can we pray? Hey, now it's time for prayer. Let's pray for the healing. Oh, in the name of Jesus. We bind every spirit. We rebuke every demon. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to pray for this. Let's pray. Amen. 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 No answer. Nothing. It must be from the desire. Kariko pariyama sudeke. Let's pray for this. When the people are praying, they must, it must come from the Spirit. Hey, are we all of us? Wait a moment. Let's pray for this, okay? Are we, are we all of us into it? The moment two or three are not into it, you're wasting your time. When I can say now, okay, let's pray against this to happen. The moment some of you, you are not even interested in what I'm saying. But when everybody is feeding what I'm feeding, 
that prayer has so much power. Ask your neighbor, are you really here uh, under desire? <laughs> Tell them, I can sense uh, pressure here. So I'm sensing pressure. <laughs> How many of you prophet, I think you're right. I've been praying under pressure for a long time. Can I see your hands up? If you've been praying under pressure... If you are saying, prophet, this is what I've been looking for to hear. I can know how to pray in order for God to answer me. I say it was a pressure, it was a fantasy, or it was a wish. And I want today to develop a desire in order to acquire. <laughs> Ask me, what's your desire? So, prophet, do you mean it's wrong for me to sit down and fantasize things to happen? I never said that. The only thing I've said is it is wrong to base the fantasy as a foundation when you are praying. It is good the fantasy must, it must reach a boiling point of developing into a what? A desire. The prayer that comes from a desire and a prayer that comes from a fantasy, they're two different prayers. Imagine. Imagine somebody is praying as a fantasy. And you are praying from the spirit. Did you hear that? You are praying from the what? It can't be the same. Imagine somebody you love most is giving up their life and you are given an opportunity to pray. Can you pray as a fantasy no. for them to live? No. You can be saying, hey, 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 Father, I'm praying. I desire. It's just a, a. Oh, can you give this person a, a second chance? There is a desire that develops. You feel your intestines as if they are dissolving. There's a splunking level. But where you are, why do you want me to pray for you? Uh, my studies. I need my studies to move well. Hey, before we pray, take a moment. Let it develop into what? You must feel like I need this. It must reach a level whereby. You, when, you are, when you are praying, even if your phone is ringing, you can't even hear it. Because now it's no longer, it's no longer just... A, you see, when you're praying out of just a wish or a pressure or something else, when somebody is calling you, you may stop your prayer and go and attend to them. But when it's a desire, you want this thing to happen now. The Bible says when you pray, anything you desire, that moment, even if somebody comes with a gun, and shows you a gun, I'm going to shoot you. You will not even know they are there because your heart, your soul, your spirit is focused. It's a level in the spirit. Ahiteo. So Ahiteo. It's the greatest secret God taught me. He said, my son, you pray for people. I said, Yes. He said, what's happened? I said, God, there are some people that are coming back with the testimonies and some are not. He said, do you know why? I said, no. I said, they are praying from pressure. I, the Lord, I don't answer pressure. Jesus even said, I'm telling you again. Jesus said, that. I'm, said again, I tell you, you must pray from desire, not pressure. Not want, not a wish. Shake your neighbor say, are you hearing this message? Tell your neighbor, in the realm of the spirit, 
I'm sensing pressure. Ask them, is it true what I'm sensing in the spirit? If you are refusing that it's pressure, it must be a fantasy. Hey, prophet, pray for me. And hey, look in your eyes. What should I pray for you? Hey, shh. I just know it's pressure. Even before you continue. Hey, shh. Oh, what should I pray for you? Hey, shh. <laughs> what should I pray for you? Prophet. Pro prophet. <laughs> Hannah, the, in the Bible, the Bible says she prayed several times. Do you know why? Because of Penina. It was pressure. All her prayers were not answered by God because it was a competition with Penina. The Bible says God did not answer her prayer. She went in the temple several times because she was praying because Penina had the children and she was showing her her children. And she was like, mm, I also need the children. Look at this. So you cannot base your prayer basing on Penina until she reached a level where her prayer was not basing on that. It was basing on a desire to have a child. She even said, if I have got this child, I will give this child in the temple. She never said, I will show Penina, I will show my, my, my friends. She said, I will give this. So there was a mission. The foundation is different. I want to pray with you today. But the basis of your prayer must be what? Let me say, I was, I was, you know, I was passing somewhere and um, I saw a certain guy. He's, yeah, he's very handsome. I want to marry that one. God of Major One, do something. It's no longer desire. It's not even a want. It's lust. So imagine you praying on the basis of lust. Father, I am praying. I am praying. What's the foundation? Lust. You see, so when, when you are praying today, I want to pray with you, as I've said. Today is a day of prayer. Whether I will touch you, whether I will say, hold your hands with your neighbor, pray. Before you pray, you must have the same desire. Or else, you're wasting your time. A desire must develop. Stand up, everybody. Benina prayed for so many years without a child. Benina prayed for a long time. There was no issue. I mean, Hannah prayed for a long time because she was competing with Benina and there was no issue. God will not answer you basing on a competition. God will not hear you because somebody has it and you want it too. Whatsoever you desire. All I want you to do today, desire that job. Desire that financial breakthrough. Desire that miracle. Desire that mansion. Desire that wonderful husband or wonderful wife. Desire. It must be a desire. We're going to pray together. Are we ready for prayer? Wave your hand if you're ready for prayer. Wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand. 
Today I came here to pray with you. If you and me shall agree on this day, the Bible says we shall have whatsoever we desire. Now let me go back to my statement. First statement I said earlier on. To say, the Bible says, as in touching anything that you desire, The Lord shall give it to us whatsoever we desire. Before you pray, please, I don't want to say pray. <laughs> no. I want you to sit, to think, develop that desire in you before you pray. There must be that passion in you. Emotional feeling. Yes. Spiritually. How can my own child be under the influence of drugs? How can I be living like this? Struggling like this? A change must happen to me. That's what we are talking about. Desire. We're going to have a worship moment. As we are worshiping the Lord. My job today is to pray with you. That's all. I have no any other responsibility. Apart from to pray with you. And when I, I have faith. When I pray with you today. You and me. Will chase out demons. You and me. Will remove sickness. You and me will remove every pain. You and me will command everything that is blocking your way to come out. You and me will stop things to happen. 